now what I will do is I will get started with tutorial problems today because we need to solve those tutorial problems. Let us see how do we do that. So, I have already a request from few participants that I need to solve 33 problem number 33 and problem number 37. So, let me take problem number 33. So, let me see how I can coordinate with myself. Today I am missing Professor Arun, he has gone for PhD interviews. Okay. So, let us get started with tutorial problem 33. What is this problem number 33 stating is there is a flat plate, there is a flat plate and its length is 3 meters and u infinity 1 which is flowing from left to right on the top is u infinity 1 is 60 meters per second. Okay, and t infinity 1 is 200 degree Celsius, very high temperature hot gases are flowing. And on the bottom side, on the bottom side, there is movement of the air from right to left, that is u infinity here is 10 meters per second, and t infinity here is 20 degree Celsius. Okay. So, there is a heat transfer from hot gas to the flat plate and there is cooling at the same time by the cold air which is sitting at the bottom. Now, the what are the properties at t infinity 1? So, what is that I should do? See, actually what is that I should do? I have to take the properties at average film temperature. Do I know the wall temperature here? I do not know the wall temperature. Okay. So, what do I do? I will go ahead with by taking the properties at the t infinity only, okay, because I do not have any other option. So, if I do that or here in this problem, they have given us properties because to exclude us this confusion, but where did those properties come from at this temperature only? That is Prandtl number equal to 0.7, k is 0 0.03, nu kinematic viscosity is 20.92 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meters per sec meter squared per second. Similarly, for the bottom stream, it is Prandtl number equal to 0 0.707 k equal to 0 0.0263 watt per meter Kelvin. Kinematic viscosity is 15.89 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter squared per second. Rest is straightforward. First thing is what I should do in any natu in any forced convection problem, what is that I should do? Reynolds number. So, what is the question asked? Assumptions are steady state and let me write, this is important. Assumption steady state is not an important assumption, but there is an important assumption other than that, that is the reason why I am writing steady state. And second thing is that I am assuming that plate is very thin. That is why perhaps everyone has asked the problem number 33, why because we need to make this assumption. Plate is very thin. When I say why, why am I making this plate as very thin? You see what is happening? There is a boundary layer developed here like this and on the bottom how is the boundary layer developed? Like this. That means, there is convective resistance here that is 1 upon h 1 a, 1 upon h 1 a and there is convective resistance here that is 1 upon h 2 a and there is conductive resistance. To neglect that conductive resistance, I am taking that is L by k a that is thickness by k a, the thickness I am making it as minimal as possible. So, that the conductive resistance is so, plate is thin, conductive resistance is negligible. I am not saying 0, I am saying negligible, Achha, okay. is negligible. Okay. So, what is the question asked? Question asked is, I will solve only for one part, second part is logical. 
evaluate the heat flux through the plate at x equal to 1 meter measured from the left edge. Okay? Let us do that, x equal to 1 meter. So, that is Reynolds number. This let me call as fluid 1 and let me call this as fluid 2. So, Re 1 equal to, how do I calculate that? u infinity 1 x upon nu. What is u infinity 1 here? 60 into x is how much? What is x? 1 meter. Nu is 20.92 into 10 to the power of minus 6. So, what is that I get? I get 28.68 into 10 to the power of 5. Why do I write in terms of 5, 10 to the power of 5? To make out whether it is laminar or turbulent. Definitely it is turbulent. So, this is turbulent flow, turbulent flow. So, because it is turbulent, I have to take the correlation for Nusselt number n u 1 equal to 0 0.0296 R e x to the power of 0 0.8 P r to the power of 1 by 3. So, what is P r? I know P r 0.7, I know R e, I will get Nusselt number as 3852 and from that I get H 1 x upon k, k I know already 0 0.03 and x is, what is x? 1 meter. I will get h 1 as, what is h 1? 115.57 watts per meter squared Kelvin. That is h 1. Similarly, I have to do for h 2. Okay? Let us do it for h 2. So, that is, I will have to move on to the next slide h 2. Again for h 2, what do I calculate? What do I calculate? R e 2, R e 2 equal to u infinity 2 x upon nu. What is u infinity 2 here? 10. What is x here? It is 2 meters. It is not 1. 1 meter from the left I said, but for the bottom one, what is that? It is 2 meters from the right because the fluid is moving in the from left right to left we should not get confused this problem is specifically cooked to confuse the reader okay if we are clear in our boundary layer i will not get confused here okay so 10 into 3 minus 1 that is 2 upon nu is 15.89 into 10 to the power of minus 6 so what is the reynolds number i get i get a reynolds number of can anyone help me out? I do not see your Reynolds number quickly. Ha, yeah, you are right. 12.59 into 10 to the power of 6 watts per, sorry, <laughs> Reynolds number has no unit. I should not be writing. 10 to the power of 5. What is this? It is laminar or turbulent? It is turbulent. So, again I will use NU1, NU2 equal to 0 0.0296 REX to the power of 0.8 p r to the power of 1 by 3, I get an assault number of 1999.968, which implies that here remember h l by k equal to approximately this that is 199.968. What is this l I am supposed to take here again? 2 meters, no confusion, 2 meters. Thermal conductivity is given that is 0 0.0263. If I substitute this, I will be getting and h of 26.3 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Compare h 1 with h 2, compare h 1 with h 2, h 1 is 115.57, h 2 is 26.3. Why is the heat transfer coefficient on the top wall higher than the heat transfer coefficient on the bottom wall? Huh? Higher velocity, not higher temperature, higher velocity higher Reynolds number because of which my Nusselt number has gone up. It is more forced convection on the top wall than the bottom wall. Temperature gradient has nothing to do. Temperature gradient will not affect. I told that. So, here my student says that because temperature gradient is more, it is why. I said again and again heat transfer coefficient is not a function of delta T and heat flux. Please do not think that it is because it is 200, that is why my heat transfer coefficient is high. Nothing to do. I have seen PhD thesis going wrong in this aspect. 
that is why I am emphasizing this. I have rejected PhD thesis based on this fundamental concept going wrong. Okay. So, please remember that heat transfer coefficient in forced convection is not a function of heat flux, not a function of temperature difference. Okay. Because here Reynolds number is high on the top wall, heat transfer coefficient is higher. Okay. So, H 2 is 26.3. Now, the heat transfer rate, how do I get heat flux? Heat flux equal to, how do I get that? T infinity 1 minus T infinity 2 upon 1 by H 1. Where is A 1 gone? I have embedded, I am writing it for Q double dash. Okay, plus 1 upon H 2. What is T infinity 1? 200. What is T infinity 2? 20. What is H 1? 115.57. What is H 2? 26.3. I will be getting a heat flux of 3856.4 watt per watt per watt per meter square. Remember, I have not written L upon K, thickness upon K A, because I have neglected the thickness is very small. Please remember that. So, who, where from where to where the heat transfer is taking place actually? From the hot gas, my plate is also getting heated up and at the same time my plate is getting cooled by the, by the cold fluid. So, hot fluid is transferring the heat transfer is taking place from the hot fluid to the cold fluid through the plate, through the plate. Okay. So, with this I think there is a second part. So, what is it saying is that, is the direction of the flow important? How would it affect the heat transfer? That is, what we are saying is that, in the next part, if I take in both the directions are same, that is, if I take if I take flat plate and instead of having reverse, if I take hot air in the same direction as that of cold air, what will happen? What will happen? The boundary layer will increase. The gut feeling would be the heat transfer rate here will be lesser, lesser. The first thing is that, but it is not right. Why I will tell you? Why? Because R E 1 and H 1 is not going to change. What will I get? R E 1 is same, I am not going to write R E 1. H 1 is 115.71. But what is, is R E 2 going to be same or different? X is 1 meter now, it is no longer 2 meter. So, R E 2 will become now 10 into 1 upon 15.89 into 10 to the power of minus 6, I get 6.29 into 10 to the power of 5. Still it is turbulent. Okay. If I put that, I get H 2 of 30.197. What has happened to my heat transfer coefficient? Actually, heat transfer coefficient has increased. Heat transfer coefficient has increased. So, because of that, I will get Q double dash as 4309.79. Heat transfer coefficient has increased means what? My resistance has decreased. So, my heat transfer rate should increase. So, that is what I have got. Earlier, what was the heat transfer rate I got? 3856, now I have got 4309, because heat transfer coefficient at this location has increased. So, this is how you can look at this problem in several ways, several different ways and try to understand the heat transfer coefficient concept. So, once you have understood this, rest all problems more or less. In fact, once you understand the boundary layer concept, solving problems in, in convection is easier, but understanding is difficult. Okay. So, what I will do is for next 10 15 minutes, I will I will not take questions now. I will introduce one another concept which I had skipped that is what is called as scale analysis. If you see here, see I had taught you one scale analysis, I will solve 37 problem, do not worry, I will solve only one more problem before we sign off today. I want to introduce one important concept that is scale analysis and one of the professors had very earnestly asked yesterday and had postponed because I myself was stuck okay? and I said that you keep working as a homework because I myself had stuck and I perhaps have now understood that 
Okay. So, let me say what is that? It is about scale analysis. So, we did scale analysis for Prandtl number less than 1, that is we did it for thin or thick, thin boundary layer. So, let me see where it is, yeah, here in the scale analysis. Okay. So, we said that if we do the order of magnitude analysis, I will get delta is of the order of L R E L to the power of minus half and C f is R E L to the power of minus half. This is very well understood and we did it for Prandtl number less than 1, okay. Prandtl number less than 1 and we got delta T by L as R E L to the power of minus half and P R to the power of minus half. Now, Nusselt number I get R E to the power of half and P R to the power of half. Now, what will happen? Here, Prandtl number is less than 1 means my hydrodynamic boundary layer is thinner than the thermal boundary layer that is delta by delta by delta t is very much less than 1. So, delta is very much less than delta t. Here we went away, went ahead and took u infinity is same throughout my thermal boundary layer. Okay. That was an easy thing and very simplified thing, but now life is not easy when I come to when I come to thin thermal boundary layer that is let us do that. I am going to do this because whole of this transparency whatever is there is wrong except this u by u infinity equal to delta t by delta, okay. except that everything is not right. Okay. So, let me take thick boundary layer that is I am taking Prandtl number greater than 1 that is for water and oil. I want you to derive along with me because this is an involved concept. So, delta by delta t is greater than 1. What does this mean? Delta is hydrodynamic boundary layer is much much thicker than the thermal boundary layer. Now, if I take a flat plate and draw the hydrodynamic boundary layer, it will look something like this. That is, this is my hydrodynamic boundary layer, it is u infinity and this is my hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness delta. Now, what is my thermal boundary layer thickness? Okay. So, thermal boundary layer thickness is smaller than that of hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness that is this is delta t. Okay. So, with this let us go back and see how does u infinity vary that is u varies. How does u vary? How does u vary? Let me take u is varying linearly that is why I have plotted linearly. You see when I am doing scale analysis I have plotted all straight lines if you have noted carefully. Why? Because I am assuming linear relationship, but when I was plotting boundary layer I was plotting very nice parabolic nature, but I am not doing that now. So, now if I do that that is u equal to that is u equal to m y u equal to m y plus c. Okay. So, what is that? What are the boundary conditions? When y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. When y is equal to 0, let me write that. When y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. Now, when y is equal to delta, u is equal to u infinity. When y is equal to delta, u is equal to u infinity. In fact, I should not be using equal to, I am just going actually I should be writing of the order of. So, if I put this, what will become constant c equal to 0 and what will I get m as u upon, what will I get that u upon u infinity equal to u upon that is m turns out to be u infinity by delta. So, let me not do this because it is straightforward u equal to m y because my emphasis is somewhere else u equal to m y u equal to m y what is m u infinity by delta. So, u equal to m y is u infinity y by delta. So, now u by u infinity equal to y by delta what is my y? what is my y which is of interest to me? 
thermal boundary layer thickness. I am not interested what is happening above the thermal boundary layer thickness. So, u by u infinity equal to delta t by delta that is it is not equal to u by u infinity is of the order of if you think that I am going very fast what is that I get let me do this if I am going very fast. So, what is that I get this implies that c equal to 0 c equal to 0. Now, u equal to at y equal to delta u equal to u infinity equal to m into delta. So, what is m? What is m? m equal to u infinity by delta. So, now u equal to u infinity by delta into y. What is what is that y which I am interested in here u is of the order of I should not be writing equal to why I am not interested above delta t because my heat transfer is taking place within that delta t. So, y is delta t. So, I get u is of the order same thing u is of the order of u infinity into delta t by delta. Let us keep this in the back of our minds. Now, what is my energy equation? U del t by del x plus v del t by del y is equal to alpha del square t by del x squared we always neglect and take del y square because delta t by l square is much lower than delta t by delta t square here. Okay. So, what will I get? What will I get for u? What is that I should be substituting for u? I have just now found u infinity into delta t by delta into what is this del t? What is the scale of del t? Delta t and what is del x? What is the scale of del x? L. Okay. Comma. What is v? What is v? V is, we have to be careful here. We will go to continuity equation. What is continuity equation telling? Del u by del x plus del v by del y equal to 0. Okay. So, what is u? What is the scale of u? Where is that u I want? That is at delta t. Let that u here be u only. Let me call that as u only. I am, I am not wanting u anywhere else. I want u at delta t. Okay. So, u at delta t is what? u at delta t is what? u infinity delta t by delta. What is the scale of x? What is the scale of x? 1 upon l del x is l x l is of the order of v. What is the scale of y? What is the scale of y? Delta t. So, what is the scale of v now? u infinity delta t squared upon delta l. Is that okay? Vijendra, you are with me? Okay. So, if I substitute that here u infinity delta t square upon delta l. What is the scale of del t? Delta t. What is the scale of del y? Which thickness I am interested? Delta or delta t in my energy equation? Delta t this should be of the order of alpha delta t upon delta t square. Now, what will happen to this? 1 delta t will get cancelled out with 1 delta t will get cancelled out with the another delta t. How do these two terms compare with each other? How do these two terms compare with each other? They are same. What does that tell to me? What does that tell to me? It tells that u del t by del x is of the same order of v del t by del y. I cannot throw any one of the two and they are same, they are of the same order. So, let me take only one of the two. Let me take, see it is like telling 1 rupee plus 1 rupee is 2 rupees. It is of the order of rupees only. It is not, if you take 10, 10 rupee plus 11 rupee, it is still tens of rupees only, not hundreds. Is that right? So, that is what we are saying. So, u infinity del t by, this delta t delta t I can neglect del t by delta squared L is of the order of alpha upon 1 by delta t square. 
Is that okay? I have to move on to the next transparency. Let me do that. So, if I move on, what will I get for del t? If I move this del t squared from right hand side to the right left hand side, what will I get? Delta t cube is of the order of yes, alpha l into delta squared upon u infinity. Something missing? Delta squared I have put. Delta t cube is of the order of alpha l by u infinity into not delta squared. Where did this delta squared come from? It is delta only, sorry. Here I have made a mistake. In the previous thing, please note that this is not delta squared. While transferring, I have transferred it wrongly. It is delta only. I do not know whether I can do that erasing now. Yeah, I am able to do that luckily. So, this is delta, this is delta. Okay. So, I get delta, this is right, this is delta, this is delta, alpha l delta by u infinity. So, what is, let me do some rearrangement. What is delta? Alpha l by u infinity. What is delta? L r e l to the power of minus half. This we have derived earlier. Then what is that? Let me divide both sides by L squared. Delta T cube upon L squared is of the order of what do I get? Alpha by let me multiply and divide it by nu that is what do I get? u infinity, u infinity, this L squared only I have pushed it this side, I am not dividing, this L squared only I have pushed it. Let me multiply and divide by L, okay. let me multiply and divide it by L, u infinity by u infinity L by nu. I have done several things here, let me tell you one by one. L, this L squared I have pushed it to the left hand side and I have multiplied and divided it by nu and I have multiplied and divided it by L. Okay? Now, what is this? And also there is another term, no, R e L to the power of minus half. Right? So, this L let me push to the left hand side. What will I get? Delta T cube upon L cube. What is nu by alpha? What is nu by alpha? Come on, yar. No, no. Parental number, Samir, 1 upon parental number. Okay. What is u infinity L by nu? Yes? 1 by R e. Very good. 1 by R e into R e L to the power of minus half. So, delta T cube upon L cube is of the order of 1 by parental r e l to the power of, if I push this one minus 1 by half to the denominator, what will I get? 3 by 2. So, if I write delta t by l is of the order of p r to the power of minus 1 by 3, r e to the power of, r e to the power of minus half. And I will not do Nusselt number equal to h delta t by k, if I substitute that I will get directly Nusselt is of the order of R e to the power of half P r to the power of 1 by 3. Is that okay? So elegant it is. So all questions asked on this are now answered, are now answered. So I would take one or two questions for 10, 15 minutes and then solve the last problem. So over for discussion. Nirma University, Ahmedabad. Any questions on the material which I have taught today and the concept and the experiments which we did? Yeah, uh, today you discussed about the uh, wavelength and uh, the red color being used for the traffic signals because of a longer wavelength. Uh, now the question I, uh, I yeah, here the red wavelength will also have the low energy content because its wavelength is longer. So, will it not affect the uh, visualization at a longer distance 
because the intensity of the radiation emitted by the red wavelength will be as compared to other wavelengths. No, the question asked by one of the participants is that red wavelength is having higher wavelength as opposed to that of the green and larger wavelength means smaller energy. See, wavelength does not decide energy. I told in the morning, what did we say? Wavelength it is decided by, sorry, the energy is decided by whom? It is decided by the frequency. So, frequency decides the, frequency decides the energy, not the wavelength. Wavelength is decided by the medium. Okay? So, please do not get confused with the energy and the wavelength and the frequency. Frequency decides the energy wavelength is decided by the medium in which my electromagnetic wave is traveling. Okay?